Hey, Bikeaholics, Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley Davidson and a brand new line for the all new Honda Goldwing named Gold Strike. Top quality, affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Hey, buddy, I just uh, picked up on your um, YouTube channel and your, your podcast, and I couldn't be more pleased with the uh, the content and, you know, just the general, you know, energy from it. Man, you've got a really good thing going, and I've been riding for, I don't know, we're about the same age, probably as long as you. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I just wanted to give you a, a big thumbs up, man, and um, I'm going to look into your patron stuff and see if I can get signed up for that. You're doing a great job. But uh, my name's Mark Johnson, and uh, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, if you're ever out this way, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll look for you. Thanks so much for what you do. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for the kind words and kind emails, or kind words and, and kind voicemail. It is the reason that I still do, and we do what we've done here now for eight years and going strong. No flash in the pan here. Um, we didn't come and go like so many YouTube channels and so many podcasts. We're here for the long haul. We're here serving you guys, um, trying to, you know, just uh, build this community, this awesome community that we've built up to this point, And it's people like that. Thank you so much, Mark Johnson of Charlotte, North Carolina, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact. There's a voicemail button right over there. You can leave a voicemail for free from your phone or from any computer with a built-in microphone anywhere in the world, guys. And uh, it's completely free. Here in 2021, we really want to hear from you, the community. We have the platform, even if it's just a kind uh, voicemail like that, or if you want to just call and tell, you know, say something about Oscar um, and how much you hate him. That's and what awesome. What an idiot is. That's Jeez. fine too. Thank um, you. Yeah. Or something <laughs> funny, you know, or a little uh, ditty of some sort with music. I don't care. We just want to hear from you. I think it's very valuable. Um, for the community to hear from you guys and hear your voice. So we love those voicemails. Please consider it here in 2021. The other way is right if you're listening from the Law Abiding Biker app, um, smartphone app, which is free. Definitely one of the best ways to consume the podcast. There's a phone number, phone button right on there, and you can leave just a regular phone voicemail. We've got lots of ways for you guys to reach out to us and to make your voices heard. Uh, and we definitely want to hear from you. So thank you so much for that. Want to ride longer? Are you tired of a sore and achy ass? Yes, Oscar has been <laughs> partying late Saturday nights. He drinks too much. He wakes up Sunday morning about 11.45 a.m. with a sore and achy ass. He still, to this day, doesn't know why, but he gets he goes black. He goes black out on Saturday night. So Actually, Oscar doesn't even drink, but it, it's still funny. All right. That's even worse if he's not drinking That's and he wakes true. up with and a sore. Yes. <laughs> That's really bad, dude. <laughs> Anyways, Oscar fixes it very easily. He went to the law abiding biker store and he got a high quality butt buffer seat cushion. That's what he did. And uh, that definitely helps uh, <laughs> ease the achy ease ass. The oh, yeah. achy and sore ass. Yes. That's right. Right over in the law abiding biker store. <laughs> oh yeah. Once you've had Rick rack, you'll never go back. The ultimate motorcycle luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless with a Rick rack, quick attach luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawbuddingbuyer.com forward slash store. Get hooked up now. That's right. We are here. We just did an episode and we're doing another episode. Mm -hmm. Probably should have stretched out a little bit in between episodes. I don't want to We should have pull a hammy. That's right. Welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the 99% large and in charge of the motorcycle scene more than any time in history by being here, by listening to this podcast, whether you like it or not. I know you like it. You're part of what we call the hashtag biker revolution. Oh, yeah. Oscar and I just have one question for you before we get started. What are you waiting for, Bikeaholics? Mount up. Let's take you on another wild ass ride. And if you go on a ride with Oscar, he's sure <laughs> that you'll end up with a sore <laughs> and achy It keeps ass. coming back to that. Just I don't know how we got off track on circle this. Circle around, dude. Circle <laughs> around. Start it off. One for me. Right up here. <laughs> Damn it. One for me. All right. So there you go, guys. We've got an awesome episode. Of course, I got him right here. The man, the myth, the legend. Oh, Oscar, 
here pumping out two episodes with me here on a Sunday afternoon. Started at noon. It's about 1.30 now. Yeah. Something like that. We are going to talk all about what in the hell is going on with adventure and dirt and dual sport here in 2021. It's a freaking mess. Bring your Prozac. It's N- schizophrenic. Never been a better time oh, yeah. to oh. want a bike like this because yes. the choices oh, it's are insane. unbelievable. And we're probably going to go down a rabbit hole and it's going to be fun and we're just going to keep going deeper and we're not coming back out. Oh yeah, not all not all day. No, we we're going deeper we're all going, we're going we're not straight back up, out all day. Straight up. That's that's how it's gonna be. All 30 seconds of it for Oscar. He'll be right back out. That's a long time. Yep, that's that is, that is. Uh so we but we got a lot to talk about. Oscar recently, yesterday, as of the time of this recording, purchased a new dual sport category, has uh, got his daughter a new bike. I honestly don't know much about it. Me and Oscar always shoot and text each other's way. It's been a while since I've had him in the studio. So, of course, I brought him in. He's got a lot of knowledge, tries to stay up as uh, uh, definitely much more than me um, in this category. I try to stay up. And then we anyways, we talk a lot uh, in in text messages. So we're just sitting down on the mics here on this Sunday afternoon. And we're just going to talk about what we know, what we've learned. If you're interested in any of these categories, even if you aren't, it might be fun for you to see what's going on in this segment of the market. We try to be a very diverse motorcycle podcast. We like all bikes, all riding, adventure, dirt, dual, street, um, and all makes and models of bikes. So, um, yeah, we like to do these episodes. We don't do it all the time. We do stay fairly street centric, but we like to get off road here and definitely get off track. Hey, how was that? Yeah, get off track. Yeah. Oh, off road. well played. Oh. oh man. Yeah, definitely. Totally punny, bro. Totally mm-hmm. punny. So, couple announcements, guys. Um, before we get started, a new free video. Always pumping out the videos there on the YouTube channel. Make sure when you're over there, hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you're notified when we come out with new episodes. We appreciate you subscribing over there. It bumps up the numbers, a little social proof. Helps us reach more bikers around the world mm-hmm, so they can join this thing we call the Biker Revolution. The new free video is very fitting for this episode. I did it last year. Uh, I had the video up. I would finally just to hit the publish button on it because I've been busy with other videos and it's the Kawasaki KLR650 Top Gun Rear Shock Spring Install Tutorial video. Me and Oscar upgraded our suspension in those KLRs and it is a very precise uh, step-by-step DIY. Um, And I think that even if you don't, aren't interested in the Kawasaki KLR, any adventure bike, I think it gives right. you a really good insight into rear suspension yes. and mods and st- even street. A lot of it uh, goes over because let's face it, suspension is suspension. Right. It's different. There's more travel, you know, and stuff like that. But it, you'll get some really good information, I think, off watching that video and going through some of the techniques on compressing the springs and stuff like that. And, so, you know, let's face mm-hmm. it, a sh- a re- uh, upgrading the spring itself is a super cost-effective way to get a ton more out of your suspension versus exactly buying a whole new rear shock assembly from someone. If you can just up because the, you know the KLRs the the um the stock spring sh- the suspension. spring sucks, but the shock is exactly. okay when you has the right spring. Exactly. I think that was a great upgrade yeah. for what One sixty of the bucks best or something. Upgrades yeah. we did. Yeah, and we sell that suspension if you're interested for the KLR right and other similar bikes in the law abiding biker store. Um, so that new free, free, free video, I should say, is out. We love our sponsors up front. Of course we love our sponsors. But these people, that's right, some of our newest patron members are a direct result why we are publishing this episode, hitting the publish button, why we're giving it to you in the back of your accounts, and why we're continuing to go strong eight years. Our patrons are our base. They're our foundation. They are our... What's a better... Our soul. Oh, our rock. A rock. They are our rock. Why don't you thank the first ones there? Jerry Kobar of Sunset, Texas is a top tier patron. Chris Farr of Willis, Texas. And Michael Palu of Grantsville, Utah. Moving on with Rick Searles of Barracliff Manor, New York. Barracliff? Yeah, Briarcliff, sorry. Kenneth Wayne Gardner of San Antonio, Texas. And Paul Otten of Sanford, North Carolina. Nicholas Audet of Drummondville, Quebec. Canada. Josh, sure, you betcha. Hey. James Hunter of Jameson, Missouri, and Eric Oswald of Greenville, Ohio. Finishing it out, Chris Weisgarber of Massillon, Ohio. 
Don Treese of Kansas City, Missouri, and finishing William Axelrod of Blue Ridge, Georgia. LawAboutingBiker.com forward slash Patreon. Pledge a certain amount per piece of content. No risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits, t-shirts, stickers, the private Facebook group, Troll Free Zone. Talk about stuff like this episode right in that group. A lot of the ideas that come here are from that group, and it is amazing. Access to our live video broadcast and chat. Access to episodes like this months before everybody else gets them. Course top tier. Those premium videos up on request and access to those ride meetup and events like we got going on in 2021 down in California and the Lake Tahoe area going to be awesome guys. And really looking forward to that. Hopefully this episode comes out before that. Who yeah. knows? I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. All right. So we're just going to dive in. Oscar and I, like I say, I've been going back and forth. Um, let's just start the conversation here. Okay. Um, because me and Oscar, we've got, so we're going to talk specifically like dual sport adventure dirt, right? So you all know if you're regular listeners, Oscar and I um, are into the adventure riding. Uh, we both currently own Kawasaki KLR 650s. Mine's a 2018. Mine's the a last 17. 17. Yep. 2018 was the last year they made the KLR. Then they stopped. And they stopped. And then now they're making them again. Now so it's that's, back. We're going to talk about that too. Let me put that on my notes. Oh, the yeah. KLR is back. Because we did an episode on the KLR going extinct. Yeah, like the dinosaurs. And I don't think we've even published that episode. Oh, so really? I need to get in. I think I'm a, that whole episode. Yeah. I you can dump these back to, to back. Well, I, I might have to bag it. I don't know. Should we still put it out? I think yeah. there's still a lot of good information in there. Yeah, why not? Because it is back. So the episode, a lot of people will be going, well, it's not extinct. It came back. But it did go extinct. And we talked about it a did. lot of the history of it. So I think it's yeah. still a good episode. I, I think so, too. We'll leave it. We'll, we'll publish it. Um <laughs> It'll give you a little bit of information into, you know, maybe the new KLR. So that's what we're rolling. Um, and we do a lot of um, riding around here and really enjoy that along with the street riding. So the conversation always revolves around this with me and Oscar when it comes to this. Because I forget my age sometimes. <laughs> What's my age again? What's my age again? <laughs> <laughs> Real my friends old. say I should act my age. Yeah, right. What's my age again? <laughs> uh, okay. So, you know, there's a, I want to just like, sometimes I'm like, why don't we just keep the KLRs and just go dirt? Now he's got a young daughter that he's getting into motorcycles, um, dirt. Um, and then there's something like in between dirt and street. And then there's the KLRs. And I'm always like, dude, why don't mm -hmm. we just get dirt bikes keep the KLRs for adventure riding, then do dirt. And then he got something recently, um, yesterday, in fact, mm -hmm. which we've been talking about and I want one, but now he talks about it and I don't know. I don't know if I want one. We don't even know what it's for. We do know what it's for. So the, it's just, it gets really convoluted. It really does. The market's exploding. Huh? Yes. It's crazy. There are so many, there's it's never been, if you have money, and you want to get into what we're about to talk about, there is no better time oh, other than man. you're going to be frustrated on like, what to get. Uh, dude, my head hurt. I mean, let's face it, the enduro um, market. I mean, there was some like that Ulysses bike I'd never seen, but there's some bikes that came and went off and on here or there. But for the most part, the enduro market stayed relatively unchanged for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. There was the DR or the DRZ. There are bikes that... Or barely street legal if you threw some signals on them. Yeah, basically, right. right. Basically, the DR, uh, the KLR, the XR, uh, and then the WR, all the the four main Japanese ma bike makers. Honda, and then Yamaha. Suzuki, Suzuki and Kawasaki. Kawasaki. And yeah. then KTM was in there. And KTM goes back to probably the early 2000s. So they're a little behind the game, but they're a new bike maker. But even before that, then there was some other Husqvarna. The old Husqvarna was making some Enduro style bikes and the Harley Davidson had the XR models in there for a while. They were some enduro style, not as much enduro flat track, but similar style. Mm -hmm. um, kind of with the bases in the older seventies and eighties scrambler bikes. Yeah, so, right, right. So this this uh, market was like unchanged. You had like four bikes to choose from, basically. Right. Big and heavy, the XR, KLR, mm -hmm. or the smaller XR, DR series. Which and then, suck on the road. And they weren't that great on the road. Right. And they were, none of them had a ton of power. Or you got into the dirt bikes, the YZ, KX, CR. And then you only had like three choices. 
Uh, the YZ125, oh, the YZ250. I want that bike so bad, dude. <laughs> the YZ125. Why do I want the YZ125? I, I don't I know. I want it so bad. It I mean, I got my daughter a 250, reviews. so it's... Yeah, right, dude, yeah. <laughs> dude, that little light thing with that yeah. kind of part. Did you see the things people do on those oh, things? Yeah. Dude, that's a good bike. They fly through the air. But when you fly through the air, you got to land. Well, no, I'm not even talking about <laughs> jumping. I'm just talking about that, what a light little bike yes. with some power and just throw it around. Oh, yeah. I oh, mean, for sure. I mean, that's, that's a, that, dude, people like that bike. The thing is that YZ125, the two fifties, I don't know. See, now we're going to go down the, no, it's what, fine. What this is what we're CC here for rabbit hole. I mean, it's this a is mess what we're here for sometime in about, well, KTM started ramping up in the, like in 2010 ish, you know, I'm being real general. Um, but still everyone was behind still the XR 650, the XR 400, the DRZ 400 Suzuki had the two, only the two offerings. And then the KLR and then the smaller KLXs, 250s, that were enduro bikes. Yamaha's, now they have the Tenere, but they had the WR400 or 450 and then the WR250. Those were mostly dirt bikes with a different right. transmission. Honda. And then Honda had the C the XRs. R oh, XRs. The XRs. Now they have the CRF. CRF, Which right. is in, the, now it's the X model, which are like the Baja bikes. They're lightweight Baja bikes. They're not really enduros. The C we, we have one at the office. The CRF, I wrote it. Holy shit. It's awesome. Why do you have it? For uh, search off -road. and rescue? Y yes. Or for your... Well, uh, for forest service stuff. Forest service stuff, right. What is it? It's a CRF 450. Yeah. The CRF 450. LX. I can't remember which one it is. But you can... It's street legal. But it is a... It's a CRF, dude. It's a race bike with uh, blinkers and... Uh, is that uh, it? It... Uh, has mirror it's uh, go go down uh-huh what's that one right there this that l it's the l right there all the way to the right or left to the left right there right there yeah okay. i think that's the one we have but ours isn't a 20 it's like a 17 or something i think it's an x anyway that now there's a new category of that bike with a headlight you don't i guess we're talking about bikes from the manufacturer set up to do a certain thing so the klr comes from the manufacturer set up to ride street dirt is that the CRF 450X? Yes. I think that's what we have. That's the 2022. This is straight from Honda site. Yeah, I think that's what we have. But ours is street legal. It has turn signals and all that. So I'm not sure. See, it's a mess. It is. I, I don't it even know. Mess. But but there's a there's a category now of this kind of cross-country enduro Baja style bikes mm -hmm. that aren't totally track bikes. They're not motocross bikes, but they're like almost the twin brother of a motocross bike. Ton of power, high rev. You know, you got to rebuild the motor every other year. And then okay. there, there's the KLR. And then somewhere in between is like the, the Husky 701 and the Husky 501 and the freaking KTM 500s. Dude, it is a total mess. And now the new WR450. Some of these now have on the fly map switches, EFI control, like we uh, do with our Harleys. The WR? WR450. Would they consider it? That's a Yamaha. Well, huh? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Got them all over the place, dude. Uh, well, you, you, you're going to have a ton of tabs open. I know. Well, I'm going to close some of them, but here's and, a, let's go back to the Husky, uh, 701. Yep. And now, and then there's the 701 legal. L. Yep. 701 L, which has a bigger gas tank. It's heavier, but that thing has a ton of power, but you look at it. It looks like a dirt bike. It does. It's very, very dirt bike. Mm -hmm. Look that at thing the thing is not going to be great for the street. It'll get you. Like a day ride like us. Yep. Where you're going to ride 30 minutes to get to dirt. Yes. That is not, you're not That's going it. cross country on right. this thing. No. Nope. This is to get on the dirt. Yeah. Street right. legal so you don't have to trailer it just to get on the dirt. So That's you where see you want to be on this. And the shape of the seat yeah. starts to come into play. The, you know, it's the, just a freaking dirt bike seat. It's yeah. close. But if you look at it, like if you look at a CRF 450. Right, they're really flat. It's flat. And that one's not quite as flat. So Right, like this. That yep. gets a little closer. And, and that's not the, well, the I guess Honda. it is. Yeah, the CRF 450X. Mm -hmm. So I, so <sighs> God, dude, I love, the I can't killer. believe they can produce all these bikes. It's crazy. And then still, they must be selling enough of them. And we haven't looked at like the, a few models. It's just, there's the betas God. that it depends on what you want to spend, but the beta beta is a, an Italian company that's producing this very similar bikes. Yeah. Like if you lived in Moab and you were riding the, you know, BLM land where you don't need necessarily to be street legal everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of these bikes, but there's also now with in 21, Honda and Kawasaki, the KLX and the CRF. Uh, sorry, not the C. Is it the C? It's the CR. They are CRFs. It, the designators are goofy. Right. Because it's hard to tell if is it a race bike or not. 
<coughs> right. But now they're coming back into more enduro. So like what I bought closer to the KLR, but smaller. And so it is, a, I do, my brain went numb studying all these bikes. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. crazy. Are, my brain's already numb. Oh, uh, let's bring it back to here and then we'll move on and we'll probably get back to some of these bikes. So to put this in perspective, let's talk about the Kawasaki, mm -hmm. which you bought yesterday, which is a Kawasaki KLX 300. 300, 300, not the R. I did 300. I bought the 300. Okay, we'll go, um, we'll talk about the differences between the R and I know that I, I can picture it. Yeah. So the KLX 300 Kawasaki mm -hmm. versus these two bikes are kind of neck and neck. The Honda CFR 300. The CRF 300. CRF 300. There's a I said there's, CFR, CRF. Sorry, I always yeah. get those backwards. CRF 300. These two 300 bikes are basically L. L. The 300 L is the same as the KLX 300. Okay. And then there's the, I think the CRF R and the KLX 300 R, CRF 300 R. And then the CRF 300 L Rally. Rally, right. And the, there's so no let's just talk about what you bought. The KLX right now, 300 R. You didn't get the R. No, I got okay. the, just the 300. Which would be a competitor to the CRF 300 L. 300 L. Okay, perfect. So those two bikes, we'll kind of talk about those because that's what me and you were texting back and forth yes, on. Right. And I did, as soon as you did it, I was like, <laughs> I started getting obsessed. Yeah. So I kept going back and forth <laughs> trying to figure out which one's better. And, you know, cause I was thinking maybe I'll get one now. I'm not sure if I'm going to get one cause the reasons you got it for, yeah. I don't really have those needs. Right. Although I want one, but then I just also want like the, the YZ, just a dirt bike, dude. Yeah. just a straight up dirt bike, little right. dirt bike, YZ 125. Um, anyways, tell us about the K. Did you get it used or did you get it new or they're only you, new? Okay. That's right. The K this is sorry, the first year. Cause it was a 250 before that. Yes. They both ran them in the 250. So yeah, yep. true. Um, cause I know, uh, big daddy Kane said he happened to see you at power sports or something. And you were down there. He, I, he told me you were down there because Oscar was just down at power sports oh, or looking he, at K or looking at something. I went to look, well, we went there to look at the Huskies and the KTMs. Yeah. And I said, why is he looking at that? Because he's already said he wants to get a KLX 300. Well, because I went down a rabbit hole and got freaking obsessed. Ah, okay. So I anyway, it. I knew it. Dude. <laughs> we were texting back and forth. I go, He's already said he's he's getting he wants to get like a KLX three hundred or CRF three hundred. Why is he looking at those? So yeah, no, I know. Well, because I'm a cheap ass, right? And right. so I had to see the Husky, the uh, the designator, the three three fifty, and the KTM EXC W three fifty. Anyway, it doesn't matter the okay. designator. God. Anyway, I was trying to compare them. My brain's fried. Here. I know, dude. Our it's insane. Is like what the fuck? No, well, and KTM's website sucks. Oh, yeah. You don't know what the hell. So it took me forever. The KTM and Huskies to figure out. Yeah. Um, anyway, but they're okay. So let's just lay out the foundation. Okay. Let's I'm a cheap ass. Okay. Okay. We got that. So we're done. So we instantly we're done. are going to kill off. <laughs> we're going to kill off beta KTM and Husky because they're all, and the WR, the WR is just under 10,000 and everything else is 10 or over. Okay. So I went to look at the, um, EXC 500F, the KTM 12.9 or something, 12 grand yeah, for a freaking dirt bike. KTMs, in my opinion, they're great bikes. I would oh, love yeah. to have one. I think they're definitely overpriced. overpriced. Way I think overpriced. most people would agree. Well, so is Harley's. So and there the, we go. the beta is the same way. The beta dirt bikes are freaking insanely expensive. I'm sure they're great bikes, but anyway, so I went down there. I left Rick's. I went and saw Rick and got, I broke my Cena. <laughs> right. He gave you a, yeah, he, yeah, I bought yeah, another he one. told me about that. That's right. And so I, and so I, we stopped in Prosper anyway, it convinced me what I didn't want. Uh, so the KLX 300. So, okay. So here's my situation. My daughter likes to ride. I got her a little XR 70. She's How riding. old is she now? She's nine. Nine. She's a little bit what taller. Did you, what did you, yeah, sorry. She, I, I got her an XR 70. An XR 70. 2003. That's a Cowie, right? No, Honda. Oh, sorry. Honda. Honda. See, I mess up. All right. Honda XR 70. Perfect. Three speed automatic. It's just a key. It's a cute little bike, but she is. That was in, the one she had. The, she, we still have it, but yeah, oh, okay. I haven't sold it yet. So she's a, a lot taller and she's just very much grown for her age. Mm -hmm. She's nine, but she's not, you'd look you at look her like a nine year old. She yeah. does not. She does not. Uh, so the XR 70 is too small. Yep. So, okay. So we, so she likes to ride. 
but that we can't obviously she can't ride the road to get to the closest place we ride mm-hmm. so um i got a carrier for the uh klr and carrier for your vehicle right yep and it plugs into the receiver and that klr i love it i'm not knocking the klr i love riding for what we do me it's great that's why i didn't sell it uh but loading it on that carrier and then so it culminated like in january we rode in january and uh it's a struggle well it i got it i have to clutch it up i have Mm -hmm. to i have to run it clutch it up and then i have to break at the right time i put a little hoop on the front so i can ram into it and it got off. Oh. It, it went off the carrier, the front, and the bike started to come over. And I'm like, dude, where we are? First of all, my daughter could not have called 911 for me because she has no clue where we are. Right. She couldn't pick up the bike. There was no one out there. Mm. And I'm like, this the bike slab. is, yeah, that's a slab. And the, so this bike's almost, you know, it's wet, 450 some pounds, and it's teetering. And then I killed it because it was coming over. Mm. Now I have to, now I got it under control and I have to, and I'm like, I, so I finally got in the truck and I'm like, and you realized your age. I'm old. This and I got sucks. home and to unload it and I was sore. And oh. I told my wife, I'm like, we had fun riding. It's fun to ride out there. Right. But damn, I go, honey, damn, I am beat unloading and loading this bike. And I said, told her what happened. I'm like, I got to get. You could get a trailer. I don't have anywhere to put a trailer. Yeah, I, I could. You're right. hundred percent. I, I looked at these little fold up. Yeah. But they're like 4,000 yeah, bucks. Yeah, they're expensive. They're stupid. Yeah, I get it. So I was like, I got to, I, I really did. I researched a trailer. I, I researched a ton of other options. You know what? I've got a diesel three quarter time pickup. So the bed is a long ways away. Mm-hmm. So that's why I bought that carrier. So I got to get a lighter bike that is going to be easy to load and unload. And cause she likes to go and I like to go with her and we mm-hmm. had fun. And so we went out like two weeks ago, she did her first little hill climb and she got done and she was so I mean, she was just smiling ear to ear. And she's like, Daddy, that's the biggest hill climb I've ever done. Nice. It was so much fun. How can you say that? Oh, yeah, that? that's so, cool, dude. That's so that's cool. where I'm coming from. I had to find a, a lighter bike. Then I went down the rabbit hole. I'm like, oh, yeah, I want a KTM 500. They're like 280 pounds. And I'm like, what am I going to do with that much power on a bike like that? A KTM what? I looked at like the KTM, fi- the EXC 500, yep, the EXCW, yep. EXCF 500. Great bike. They're great bikes. The, the Husky 501s, the TE or FE 350s. And these are super light. They're mm-hmm. like two, anywhere from 240 to 260, 280. But do they have a lot of power? And I started realizing I'm not 25 anymore. I don't heal right. like I used to. I'm not going to motocross it. Mm-hmm. We go up in the mountains. I'm not going to take that. I mean, it's too much for me. Mm-hmm. So this bike came out. And I when I saw it, I'm like, oh, because I've been looking since last year. Oh, it's 300 pounds. So it's pretty good. You know, mm-hmm. it's not super light. 150 150 lighter pounds than lighter than the KLR. It's got about, Cowie didn't publish the horsepower specs, but that's like a new thing. No one's publishing horsepower specs. I know. It's, it's funny, isn't it's it? It's weird. Uh, but from what I c- gathered reading over and over, maybe 30-ish horse. The KLR, I think, has about 40. Okay. So they're similar that way. Mm-hmm. It's an enduro. So really what my daughter and I are not riding 60 at the slab. We're riding like in first and second year. Mm-hmm. So right. I don't, do I need a race inspired style bike like the WR 450? No one else I ride with has a bike that is like that. So this is closer to what I have. Coming well, in at about 6,000? 5,700. I bought the camo edition okay. to, to match my KLR. <laughs> 5,700. Nice. You bought the camo edition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, bro. So, I mean, it, it looks like it's going to be a fun bike that I won't hurt myself on Mm -hmm. and it's lighter. So if I wanted to push it a little more on the, on the edge of like motocross stuff, like jumping and stuff, I could, Mm -hmm. it's got their suspension. So it's now adjustable preload on the front and it's got um, manual adjustable, manual adjustable, Mm -hmm. and then uh, manual adjustable preload and rebound damping in the back with a a reservoir, which is, you know, an upgrade from our KLRs. It's got a reservoir for the, Rear for shock? the rear shock, yeah. Oh wow, so that's pretty cool. So it, Cowie's deal is they made it more like a uh, off road bike than a, an enduro. Mm-hmm. The enduro of twenty years ago, where you were riding to Albertsons and then you rode up the Forest Road. So right. you put a milk crate on the back, and right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. You the see though, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I'm uh, talking about, bro. Yeah, yeah. But it's got uh, you know a small cluster gauge up front that is functional. Mm-hmm. That's all we need. Only drawback really right now, which you can really go down a rabbit hole with, is that it's got a two-gallon tank. 
So that I kicked that around, but let's go to the Honda. The Honda is a 2.1 gallon tank, but the you get into CRF the RF 300 L. Yes. The, the CRF 300 right. L. The comparable to this, right? Yep. Very comparable. I think within a few horse, mm-hmm. there's just some real nuanced things. I mean, we're we, going to get into that. Don't get into that yet. I don't. I'll, I'll, we we yeah. can, but I mean, anyway, so, the, so the real drawback to me on that bike is on the, the KLX on the KLX, the inner child wants to go way faster and wheelie and fly 50 feet in the air on a tabletop. That bike won't do it. Right. And neither will I, let's face it. And this the bike two, will wheelie. It'll wheelie. I can wheelie this. Oh thing. yeah. You, it would wheelie. It, it, no problem. And I've read, I've watched a couple of videos of guys that actually rode them on. Okay. So the KLX 300 R came out last year. It is an upgrade from the 250. And a lot of guys are saying that R is a real capable, mild off-road bike, which is what I'm looking for. It's a little bit easier to manage than the KLRs because it's lighter. So, you know, horsepower to weight is a little better. We're looking at it now. This and is the KLX 300 R. R. So and what makes it the R? It's just, it doesn't have all the crap. It doesn't have the, any of the street legal crap. It's a dirt bike. It's, it's a dirt bike. It doesn't, it's not, you couldn't ride on the street. No. Yeah. So it's the R. It's just I see. It's very just dirt bike. See that? I don't like that one, dude. It's really not that much lighter. Okay. And the the X, the one that I bought, has the same cam profile, the same motor. It's basically the same bike. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I, I just mean, without the street the, legal. It doesn't stuff. have gauges. Yep. And it doesn't. Yeah. So it's just a. It's, it's a, just a, it's dirt, a dirt bike, bike version. What's yep. the price point here? Uh, difference? I think it's a few hundred bucks cheaper. It's coming in at 54, yeah. 55. So it's basically the same price, same bike. It's just, just okay. Just no headlights. So I think you save maybe 10 pounds in weight or 15 pounds in weight or something. But right. Um, it, that is a dirt bike only. But you can't ride it to the store, right? Right. Yeah. Or you got a trailer for sure. And that was the thing. That was the last thing that sold me on this bike is I'm like, because we had talked about why don't we just get dirt bikes? Like the dirt bikes are kind of impractical because. Like that YZ125, you don't ride in the woods. You're not going to ride it on a single track forest trail. Why? Because it's... I the, see guys doing it. The, they do. <laughs> yeah. They, you don't see us doing it. Right. It's where the power is. So right. I had a YZ250. I took it in the woods and it was constantly shifting because well, yeah. you're high on the RPMs. Right. That's where the power is. These bikes, the power's down lower. Right. So you're not constantly you on the RPM. You can thump along. Mm-hmm. You can just thump along, right? Yep. And when you get tired like we do because we're getting old... You don't have that, have to stay on the throttle. You can, mm-hmm. you can bog it. And so I you see, it. I mean, that's what it came down to is the, the race bikes. I would have bought like a, the YZ 250. Why the, okay. I mean, I'm bigger than you are. Yeah. Okay. Is that's that the only, only reason? reason. Yeah. Okay. That's the only and reason. And I, I don't mind the 250. I'm just like, but I see guys, my size on, they love on the 125. 125 and they're just mm-hmm. like, this is the lightest. You can throw this thing around. It's got plenty of power for mm-hmm. screwing around and you know, getting over obstacles and, and stuff And if we like lived, that. like say we lived out on Sheep Company. Yeah. I'd do it. Where you could just get on it and go. Go. But we have to truck it everywhere. Yeah. That bike, even if I didn't want to ride my KLR, say we're going out here to LT or just for three or four hours, I can ride that here, top off the gas tank, and then we can ride out, ride around, come back. Mm-hmm. I can ride home. Yeah. So I can truck it. It's light enough. I can put it on that carrier and I can ride it on the street. Although my guess is more than like 20 or 30 miles on the road. It's probably not going to be that, that great. Correct. I'm <laughs> fairly confident of that. Let's do this. And then I got some uh, follow-up questions here for you. So you want to ride longer? Treat your ass with some respect already. If you got a sore and achy ass like Oscar does on Sunday mornings, get hooked up with a premium butt buffer seat cushion. This company of bikers developed a super thin, hospital grade it's gonna to need to be hospital grade for oscar oh man it is a healing it's it's and healing. restorative it's made of solid and elastic materials mm-hmm. there you go the butt buffer is designed that's right this company of bikers developed a super thin hospital grade cushion mm-hmm. and it's unlike those gel pads that will leak if punctured guys the butt buffer is designed not to slide around on your seat fits all motorcycles and stalls in seconds easy to clean and yep helps to dampen those vibrations. With plenty of models to choose from, they assure you'll have a comfortable ass every Sunday morning. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com for a store and check out our full line of butt buffer seat cushions. I can keep going with that, <laughs> I know. that ad spot. I'm bro. just not even going to fight it anymore. I'm sure butt buffer likes it. They, they, <laughs> they, they, like, they know ours. I asked them before I ever made that commercial. They were like, oh, because they made one and then I did my spin on it and they were like, oh, that's perfect. Like, as long as you're okay with it, 
Now the normal, st- I added some shit in there. I'm just saying the normal. But one. you know what? The, I, I had that on the Cowie, and I like it because if we're no, we put up, on our KLRs, yeah. yeah. If we're move, if we are up in the stuff where we're going to be moving around, just pop it off and throw it in the saddlebag. Exactly. And, and even we, on the stuff I was moving around, I didn't really have too much a problem with it. But I um, mean, yeah, if you're really going to be aggressive, yeah, pop it's it going to slide. You could just pop it off, and then yeah. for the ride home, when you're just like yep. an hour and a half from home, when you're just getting down the gravel road, you can throw it back <laughs> on. Right. Yep, there you go. Yeah, I like that thing. All right, so tell me this: uh, your 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 daughter, you bought her a new bike too. You said she was riding the XR seventy, the Honda. What'd you get her? I got her a KLX uh, one hundred and forty. Okay, boy, that was a freaking rabbit hole too. And she's and uh, but and it's a total dirt bike, and it's a dirt bike. But understand I, for for those of you that don't dirt bike, the dirt bike market right now is like the housing market. It, I, no deals, no nothing dealerships said people are coming in is and that paying it? yep covid full price dude yeah Har- the dealership at harley i was in there yeah. our local dealership there it looks like a ghost yeah. town and they said we can't get bikes in right. they're like we don't have stock the factories were shut down for a while and so what's there is what you get yep. and you're gonna pay the you either pay for it or leave because yes. our dealership does more than harley's yeah right they do side by sides and um they do Yamaha too. They do the Tenere. They, they can't even get the Tenere's in. Yeah. Um, and they said, to, and, and on top of it, on top of COVID with not being able to get stock, it was that everybody's buying up outdoor type yes. stuff. Remember the camping stores? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Last year when it first started, we went boating and uh, we went to get just some simple stuff and like the camping sections of mm-hmm. every store were just bare the shelves. Yeah. So I was like, holy shit. People were doing stuff outdoors. Right. They'd want to do something and it's the great outdoors. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, I, I started looking last late last summer for a new bike for her, knowing I probably wasn't going to buy it until this spring. And you know, every two or three, about once, I, let me rephrase that. There'd be two or three or four bikes on Craigslist every month that would pop up for kids' bikes, the DRZ 110, the KLX 110, 140, the XR 100, X, some of the, so those bikes would pop up in the, you know, 1200 to 1500 hour range, anywhere from 2003 to 2010. They mm-hmm. just float around. They're just, they're out there forever. They run forever. So I was like, oh, I'm not real worried. I'll explore these bikes. That ain't happening. In fact, I, I, te- I messaged a guy on Craigslist on a 2003 DRZ 110. It's, it's just a little bit bigger than the XR 70. 2003, $1,800. He sold it in like a day or two. Is that right? So even the used market it's, is it's crazy. It's huge. So we, I mean, the brand new KL, uh, KLX 140 was three grand, but I was going to buy a 20 year, almost 20 year old bike for almost two. That doesn't make any damn wow. sense. Yeah. Right. So the used bike market is, so the KLX, the one that I bought for me made perfect sense because a used 2009 KTM EX or XCF 500 was like five grand. Is that what you looked at down at Power Sports? No, those were new. Those were new. Okay. 12. Gotcha. 12. Okay. The, the, if I, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So I, I was going to look at this. It's an, it was an 09 XCF 505. It was still carbureted, nothing fancy, but it was five grand. And that's what they're going for. People are selling them right and left. I called a guy on a, um, or I, t- I messaged a guy on a, what bike was it? I think it was for my daughter and it was an 01 XR 100. He sold it full price in four hours on Craigslist. Jesus. It posted like at, you know, nine o'clock and I texted him when I came home for lunch at, at one o'clock. I said, Hey, what's up with the bike? We'll come get it this weekend. He goes, it's already gone. Wow. For like a 20 year old bike for like shitting $2,000. Damn. I know. Time to sell if you don't need the bike. If it's yeah. sitting in your garage collecting dust, now's the time. Now to get rid is of the it. time. So we... So you were looking at used market too, yeah. I was, yeah, mm-hmm. and I just it just didn't make any sense. So we um where did you pick it up? 40 Premier down in Prosser? No, no. They're no they don't oh, sell Premier, Cowie. Here. So that's right. Here. Uh sorry. Here. Here. Where did they move to? Um cuz they're know not where, on Fruitvale anymore. No, 16th. you know uh you know where Speed is? Yeah. They're right by oh, Speed. Oh, they moved down the gap by Valley mm-hmm. Marina and all that. Uh, yep, yeah, a nice big brand new store. Wow. It's nice, really nice store. I'm I'm surprised because I was a little worried about the Kawasaki, local Kawasaki dealership for years. Hey, it was kind of struggling. It looked like and mm-hmm. yeah, on Fruitvale. So now they got a new an store, place there. Yeah, he happened to have one of these. It was funny. I said, in "Hey, stock, well, okay. What about the one? It, he had just gotten it in the box, so we oh. couldn't take these home because they were not ready. 
Wow. That little 140 was like in the box. He's like, we have to literally put it together. But I said, hey, what about the one? So there's a KLX 110 and a 110L. The 110L uh has a clutch, five speed, and it's taller. The 110, uh, three speed automatic. So I'm like, yeah, the 110 sucks. The 110L, okay, fine. Because she's going to transition to a clutch. So a little less power might be okay for now. Right, right. So she's going to go on her... Tush. <laughs> right. did that a lot when i was a kid yeah, me straight too. on my back dude yeah, me too bike go shoot now just straight up dude yeah. on my ass multiple times uh-huh. slow learner so slow learner. he said uh he said i may get one in six to eight weeks may get a 110 l he had already seven of them or something spoken for prepaid wow so i'm like what about the 140 it's two inches taller it's a little more power it's a it's a legit bike now it's a five speed with a clutch he's like i have that here i'm like we're stuck. Mm-hmm. We're stuck. I talked to dealerships all over and they were like, wow, the KLX 110, they're all sold. We haven't gotten any of them and they're sold and we ain't getting any more. Damn. So we, he had the two bikes. And so we, I was stuck, stuck paying full price because the market is hot. So you didn't even talk to him price. You're just like, oh yeah, I did. You did. I got nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. I go and and it's not him. He's a right. nice guy. I, right. I'm glad to buy from him. And I said, you know, hey, what, what can you do for us if we buy two? And usually a, a deal or a, right. a salesman would be like, oh. he's like, okay. I'm like, well, you know, maybe can you a couple hundred bucks off? Oh, you know, this is my pricing. I go, so what is the price of that KLX 300? Oh, I have real good pricing. Okay, what is it? It's this price. I go, that's the MSRP. Yep. Wow. And then I said, what about the 140? That's the price. I go, that's MSRP. He goes, yep. That's what, that's it. And I go, can you throw in a helmet? Nope. <laughs> Really? And even throw in a kid's Dude. dirt bike helmet. But it's not just him. It, I talked to two other dealerships the Did you? same way. So you called him on the phone? No, I went there. Oh, you went and there? And when we were in Prosser. And you got the same treatment? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I talked to one of the salesmen in Prosser. I talked to the, I was talking to the owner about other stuff, but he's like, we are selling dirt bikes for MSRP because- Supply and demand. Demand is super high. And the, his salesman told me the same thing. And then I went to another dealership. Salesman told me the same thing. He said, we're, people are paying- up front, not even asking for a deal. They're just paying what they can get on the floor. Because they maybe, want it. Because they want, there's no bikes and they want it. Yeah. So I, That's you know. too bad because they should remember. Yeah. Times won't always be this good. Exactly. And those are your customers. Even if you just give them a few hundred, they're uh, still making a killing. A freaking $80 helmet. Give it, yeah. Give them yeah. a helmet because those, unfortunately, that's bad business to me because those are your future customers when the economy busts. And you can't move bikes. Those are the guys, if yeah. you treat them right, that will be back because they may still have money in a bad economy. I don't know. That's just I, my opinion. Th- I agree 100%. My wife said I was stupid, but I, you know, I'm like, it, it, so it has become no more loyalty. It be, it's just become, I yeah. bought there because, and, the, and he is a nice guy and it's a nice dealership. Right. But it, I don't know him from Adam. I just went in there and he happened to have him. It's local. So I, I don't, that's a bonus. Right. But, there's no more like, hey, you bought five bikes from us or you bought two cars from well, us. Well, there will be when the economy goes bad. It will, That's that what will I'm come saying. Back. Yeah, they come should back. remember that. Mm-hmm. Times are good right now. They <laughs> yes. always haven't been. And your loyal customers are the ones that will, your older customers who may be more financially stable are the ones that are right. going to have money when shit goes bad. Right. And you're begging for people to take bikes and they'll remember, you know what? You took advantage when times were good. You wouldn't even give me a helmet. Nothing. You know what I mean? You'd nothing. I couldn't yeah. be nothing. Yeah. But that's where it is. It's like that everywhere, at least in Washington, the stuff do I've they, been looking at. Do they have a lot of uh, other dirt bikes and, mm-hmm. and stuff too? The KX series. but The KX series. So that's the race bikes. Right. That's a smaller market. It is. It's pretty niche mm-hmm. for the race bikes. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So um, I got a question for you, but we're going to do this real quick. Like scroll down here. There we go. Mm-hmm. I do have some follow up questions for you. Oh yeah, Bikeaholic searching for new and exciting motorcycle products. Zero 3D has a products you dream about for your bike. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Hardy Davidson and Honda Goldwing motorcycles. Zero 3D's got your back with chrome and black parts lighting and other comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding. For an easy installation that equals less time installing, more time riding. Zero 3D has a design team of riders with over 40 years of experience with a passion for design and innovation. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them. Email sales at zero3d.com. 
give him a call. 715-808-0027. Mm-hmm. Check out your local Hardy or Honda dealership and ask for Sierra or Gold Strike parts. A new leader has emerged. Check out Sierra 3D's custom line of Gold Strike products for the all-new Honda Goldwings. Better yet, support us right here. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store and get hooked up with our full line of Sierra 3D products. Big Daddy Kane, goat ready mm-hmm, to box them up, ship them out to you, even throw in a little extra love in each package. You will feel it. You'll feel it in your heart and soul. Those bag blades when are my favorite. Open it. Mm, the bag piece blades. Yeah. Of lighting on the back of my bike, dude. I love them. They do look sharp. Yeah. They do look sharp. So you bought this bike, these two bikes, you have them in hand yet? Are they still no, coming together? The, when are you supposed to get them? Uh, I think Thursday after work. You excited? Yeah, I really am. I can't wait to ride that 300. No regrets that you didn't just go with the dirt. I mean, like I said, the kid in me wants that that WR450 or the KTM500 or the YZ250, but the adult in me said, hey, how about we just... I know, got it, because if you do it, I'm going to do it. So it's probably good that you don't do oh. it, because the instant you get a YZ250, dude, oh, I'm yeah. going down and getting a YZ125 I probably would have bought the, the WR450, because you can make it street legal, but it is... It's the a WR450. Who, who makes that? Yamaha. Yamaha. The but fort- it's, it's a YZ450, dude. It's a race bike that they kind of enduroed a little bit. Okay. It's I about the same price. God, that's so sexy. They are for awesome a dirt bikes. Bike, dude, oh, they're it? beautiful. Yeah. I Blue. love them. Yeah. Look at that thing. Just a little powerhouse. I am not good on a motocross track. I do a lot of crashing. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't have that bike. <laughs> No, and you're probably right. I don't know why I'm having a midlife crisis and I want a dirt bike, <laughs> just a straight up dirt bike, but you're right. It makes really no sense for the kind of riding we're doing. Another point you brought up, you know, we got the slab. The slab is just a, it's a huge piece of property where it's really unmaintained, but it's got lots of um, different terrain, mm-hmm. and, you know? Uh, yeah. It's, so it, it's a fun place to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the other thing, like you said, I think in one of our messages is, I said, why don't we just get dirt bikes, bro? And we'll still have the KLRs for adventure. Mm -hmm. Number one, finding the time. Now we got to do KLR adventure, street (laughs) and dirt, right? Right. Where you got to haul them to the track. So realistically, being full-time employed and me having a second job, you having a second job, um, maybe not that realistic. Uh, um, You made a point though, that the only thing, bad thing about dirt, and I forgot about it, is you're like, there's not that many places to ride them. Yeah. Because you reminded me, you can't take these bikes on Forest Service roads. Right. You can't even license them for it, right? No, right. So yeah, you're stuck. you can't, you've got to go to a dirt track. Or yeah. or the dunes. Right. Or, so, or the slab. Right. The slab. A so dedicated it, ORV area. Right. That, um, in the mountains, there's no, right. So all the federal lands are non-ORV. You can't, mm-hmm. didn't back in the day, because your department used to have an ORV division. Where did they, I thought they went in the mountains. They do, uh-huh. but it's for licensed bikes, right? Well, that was one of the things we're up there for. For looking for people riding unlicensed bikes. Gotcha. In areas that require driver. Uh, so you can get bike. a bike like the YZ250. Mm-hmm. There's nowhere up in the Forest Service lands that you can ride it, period. Uh, DNR. LT Murray state land mm-hmm. where we ride our KLRs a lot. and BLM and BLM just not Bureau as far land as like, management. Yeah. Right. We don't have a ton of BLM here. If you live in Arizona, right. Parts of Idaho, Utah, maybe even Eastern California. But I mean, can you imagine riding that in the, in the LT Murray No, with that big ass, those, those sections of that rock. Right. It, I mean, so like the ride we did where we went up to the tower, that was mostly long and straight. Right. How freaking fast on that YZ250. You could take it at 60. It'd be kind of fun, but but we're really... Right. You just go... Yeah, And those right. hill climbs, the, you know, the, the trails are super rocky. And it, those bikes are tough on that stuff. They are, huh? Why? Just the, because the, the power... Where the, pow- the, where right, the power, the power is. is right. Yeah, right. You know, we have um, Horn Rapids ORV Park. Yeah. But it's an hour and a half drive. It's like a, a dirt track. Well, there's... Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Is but, there? Okay. Yeah. If we didn't have kids you yeah. and i could saddle up in the truck on a saturday morning and go, go down to horn rapids back of a bed of a truck whatever right. and go to horn rapids for the day right cool in 10 years from now great right but, but i still have not kids. a lot of variety 
There, well, I know. Well, Not there's right? a lot of places to go, but it's an all day, sometimes whole okay. weekend thing with these dirt bikes because you got to go somewhere. Right. With at least with that KLX, I can ride here. And That's another reason for the KLX. Had you went with the other model, you can't. That's non-licensable. Right. And now you're stuck. Exactly. Yes, yeah, you're See, stuck. that's another good point. You, you, as long as we have a bike that can be licensed for street, it opens up right out our back door a shitload mm-hmm. of an area. Mm-hmm. Anywhere we want to go, basically. Mm-hmm. On Forest Service, fire mm-hmm. roads, BLM, yep. state, federal, there's just nowhere we really can't go except yep. wilderness, obviously. Exactly. Um, yeah, right. Yep. Exactly. You know, wilderness areas, mm-hmm. um, designated wilderness areas. So yeah, it it brings me back to reality. We had that conversation. Yeah. So if you're thinking of this, there's a, you know, with the adventure market and the dual sport market, that is something you have to think of as the, these dirt bikes are very limited um, on the areas that right. they're going to be allowed in, where you got basically the same dirt bike, right? As yeah. the KLX 300R. 300R, you basically got the same bike, but you can slap a plate on it. Yep. It's licensable under the state regulations. And yep. now you've just opened yourself up to ride that same bike on Forest Service land and federal exactly. lands, right? Yep, exactly. So these bikes you could ride in the LT Murray and stuff, the dirt bikes. Yes. Without yes. being licensed, right? Yes, exactly. Right. Yep. You just have to get it there. Exactly. You just got to get it there. That sucks. But by slapping a plate on and some signals, um, you can't just do that on these bikes. They state won't license them. So you could take the R, but it's not licensable, right? I think by the time you invest, would you would be, have to. You would. It would be the X, the one I bought. Right. It would be the same thing. So could you take a YZ125? No. Okay. No. You and you, you could never. There's nothing you you could put signals on it. Do all the stuff they wouldn't. Why? I forget all these licensing rules. You know, I was having this conversation with our former uh, just ORB so we guy. could ride five minutes. Yeah, up right. North Wien asked to get to where we wanted to go. I'm just questioning it. I yeah. think the he was telling me one of the things that it hinges on is the tank. An on road tank has to be designed. Gas tank has to be designed a certain way. And it, oh, okay, it used to be that it had to be metal federally for collisions and stuff. Yes. Yeah. I don't. But I don't think. I don't, I'd have to look, but some bikes like that, that XCF I looked at on Craigslist had a plate. So whatever he was able to do to it, he you did. You got to go through the state patrol and figure you out. You have to get it inspected. Inspect and figure out yep. what their requirements are. And my guess it is It kind of becomes a mess. It can then be. Then you should have just got a dirt bike and trailered it. J- yes. After you freaking go through it just for a five minute ride, you right. know, but yeah, yes, that, That's kind of where I was. Is like, okay, I can get the YZ250 which is awesome, mm-hmm. lightweight, but then what? You know, right. I can I can license it or I can just get the WR for but the, shit that YZ250 7600 bucks. Mm-hmm. And I ain't riding that to the store to get a monster. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I would just so And then you're going to want some buddies yeah. that are going to get a dirt bike with you cuz it sucks to trailer up your own bike and go to a dirt track by yourself. By yourself. You're going to want to get somebody like me like, "Hey, you got to get a buy-in like let's get yep. dirt bikes and let's start this dirt bike thing and we'll trailer together on the weekends and and yeah. our families aren't doing it with us so what Correct. are we going to tell them when we leave them at home right which is why i got out of dirt bikes in the first place because right. all my buddies sold their dirt bikes so that that klx 300 you and i can go i yep. can ride it you can ride your klr we go to the same places we do the same shit it you're not losing out if i ride the klx 3100 one day i'm losing out because i can't keep up with you in terms of fuel right but other than that that's how many miles of gallons does a KLX get on a two gallon tank? It pro- I, if you're you not know, ripping hard, I would imagine it's going to be anywhere from mid forties to fifty. Most of those so enduro getting, bikes like that, so those light ones, eighty miles. That's yeah, it. That's Damn, it. Damn man. But my buddy, you know, he's got a Husky five hundred one, same boat. He okay. has a two and a half gallon tank that gets about thirty five miles to the gallon. It's a dirt bike, mm-hmm. but he has it licensed on road. Same thing. So I'm like, I'll probably get between 75 and 100 miles out of that tank. Just have to know where you're going. That's why I say don't get caught. It's limited. It is. Which is why I didn't sell the KLR. Right. We're not doing, I'm not taking the KLX on that Darlin Mountain loop that we did. Right. I ain't doing it. Right. Because there's no gas. Yep. So, but I can come here and fill up at your house, you know, get a, I can keep a three gallon gas can here. Right. Fill up, ride the LT Murray. Because that's only a 10-minute ride for us until right. we get on the LT Murray. And then we can ride the whole LT Murray and probably not go 70 miles. Right. And I still have a, you know, so. Right. Plus, you could put a little one-gallon yeah. gas jug on that thing mm-hmm. just for that to get yourself out of there. Mm-hmm. No, it's just there's so much to it. Oh, dude, it's insane. It's a great freaking conversation, man. It, um, so I get why you went with it. Do I have a need for, because I'm Probably jealous. not. 
I don't. Because you're really, when we go together, you're saying, when you go with your daughter, for the most part, you're going to take the, of course, you're going to take, if we just go up on the LT Murray just mm-hmm. for fun, mm-hmm. I would like to ride it too. Yeah, we'll just take, I'll I'm take it because I'm going to ride it. I'm going to want one too. Yeah. You know? But the KLR's paid for. Yeah. Oh, I know. And exactly. for 5700 bucks. Yeah. Cali I don't had have a, anybody I just ride dirt with. Right. You know what I mean? Or like your daughter, I don't have it, right. that. And that, again, the time investment for a third hobby. It's just like, really? It wouldn't. I And I it had my daughter, if she didn't ride, I probably wouldn't have got it. I would just, I love the KLR, dude. I love how we ride with them. Yeah. It's fun. I love it. It is. And but, it's coming up season, mm-hmm. starting to get warmer around here, guys. We've had yep. a long winter. So I'm excited talking about it to get back on that uh, uh, KLR for sure. All right. Now I've got a question for you. I want to talk a little bit more about those bikes and uh, we're at an hour. So we'll oh, yeah. start slowly winding it down because I knew you got to get home, but um, there are a few more things um, maybe you want to talk about that, uh, that I also am interested in talking about. So are you searching for the easiest and quickest attachable luggage system for your motorcycle? Rick Rack has just what you're looking for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint. Check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach strapless luggage rack systems. Mm-hmm. This father son team designed something really special. That's right. You can't find it anywhere else. Yep. And these guys ride, so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack Quick Attach System is strong, durable, secure with a lockable system. Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use Rick Rack, you'll never go back. Guarantee it. What are you waiting for, bike colleagues? Head over to the Law Abiding Biker Store, check out our full line of Rick Rack systems and bags. All right, need to make a Rick Rack system for the KLX 300. Be good to go. No, <laughs> definitely not happening. It's not happening. That would be not, uh, yeah, not not cool um, for that bike for sure. All right, so anything else you want to talk about the before I bring up a few things? The KLX 3. What was the the question I had? We didn't get to it. Was the CRF three uh, hundred yeah. L L and the L and then the rally? So just tell me about the three hundred L and why you didn't? Because you were hot to trot on that bike a little bit between that and the KLX three hundred. Yeah. Why didn't you go with the Honda? Because a lot of guys like that Honda. They do. It looked like from what I got from Cowie and Honda's website, and then just general kind of you know straining the interweb of information is that the Honda might be a little tiny bit heavier. With a few horse less, okay. that's about it. They're okay. really there. Might be there's some nuanced stuff that you might care about from Honda versus the Cowie. Both fuel injected. Both fuel injected. Both had a headlight and a little instrument. I think the the Honda had an LED headlight, and the Cowie's mm-hmm. is still a halogen. I think the Cowie suspension was maybe a little bit better, but the Honda, I I don't even remember. I think so. I think I found the Cowie's people were like in the suspension just. Just hair better, just a but hair I mean, better. And then the for what you're using this for? It's not gonna matter. Not gonna matter. No, it's not gonna matter. And so, I so then it was like, hey, I can get them both in camo and they'll match. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, that's, yeah, yeah. I, honestly, that was it. They're similarly priced. They're they're really similar. Um, and so then it was the uh, the rally. What's and the price difference? Sorry, of the the I, Honda CRF. They're almost the same. Let I think they were up. almost identical in price. Oops, I'm pulling up. That's not the one I want. I'm pulling up the Honda website. Nope. Yeah, there we go. It's right there. So yeah, the rally. I was looking at that too. Now you're getting more into the it's KLR. Heavier. Yeah, well, basically. yeah, and it's heavier. Yeah, so I didn't even look at the rally. You're looking at 5200 yeah. base MSRP. And what did you pay for the KLX? It was 57. 57. The camo the, the camo, camo color was 200 bucks option. more. Yeah. So really, yeah, very similar in pricing. They look exactly the same ones red yours is camo i mean yeah. other than hey, that the honda um, has like a 2.1 gallon tank or 2.2 gallon tank okay but other than that they're really close so let's look at the off-road i think it'll be under off-road would that be where the r is the 300 r or is it going to be under adventure there we go i, I think oh keep going or is it not no it might be under adventure there it is did you find it 300 rally yeah so it's starting at six thousand. And it's got quite a bit more, and it's like 40 pounds heavier. It is 40 pounds heavier. Yeah. What does it have more? Because it looks the same. It's got a three and a half gallon tank. Okay. And then I think it's got some electronics, a little bit of electronics. Okay. The the thing I... It, Why did you steer away from this? It's 400 weight. pounds? No, it's like 340-ish. What is their KLX weigh? 
Three hundred. Three hundred. So, uh-huh. so about how much heavier? For like thirty so, or forty pounds heavier. So, oh, just thirty or forty. So three forty. Uh, yeah. Still way like still a hundred. Hundred ten. Left. Hundred twenty pounds less than the KLR. But the point I get was it. weight. I get it. I get yeah because you're already going with a dirt bike style and you want it different than the KLRs. Yeah. Otherwise, you would just do the yeah, KLR. Right. And again, you're loading this up on your trailer hitch, mm-hmm. and so forty pounds is a lot. Mm-hmm. When and it the, comes down to that. The and three gallon. Three you have a KLR for adventure. Right. Exactly. Right. I don't need a bigger gas tank. You don't need a bigger yeah. gas tank that doesn't serve the purpose of this bike. It's interesting because now you're looking at this rally and you're just like, oh, that's the that's the see they don't do a good job there. The rally has a front fairing ish thing. Where is the rally? It's we I, go to the gallery. Right there. They Honda's these guys do their websites. This suck. is the L. We're yeah, still, but go see select trim. No, go, go back. Okay, sorry. Go to gallery. So, yeah, gallery. Gallery. Yep. Okay. And then on the right, select trim. And then go to the Rally ABS. Okay. Or either one is fine. With the ABS. Okay. There it now is. that's looking a little different. I didn't okay. That they do look a little different. Yeah, yeah it's got um the plastic's a little different. It's, it's got, got a little, windshield, a little yep. wind deflector. It does look like it might have um they don't have that's all right. Yeah, anyways, we could spec it out. I'm not gonna spec it's, it it's, out. But yeah, I, it's still a dirt bike for yep. the most it's definitely um yeah. But it's funny because now this bike is in between yeah. that and the KLR. <laughs> yeah. So now you've got a whole new segment of the <laughs> it's crazy. Fuck, Cause that rally and they're is selling really, them off the shelf. Yeah. That rally is aimed at like weekend warriors. I mean, a three and a half totally. gallon tank. It's a little bit heavier. The horsepower sucks. Somewhere in between the 300 L and the KLR 650. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like right in between there. Yeah. looks like a great bike. Yeah. I'm sure it is. Lighter yeah. than the KLR, yeah. which is cool. Um, but the weight, I but, mean like even the new KLR, but the weights like the KTM, the Huskies are getting big bikes out of lightweight. Are they? So Cowie's still way behind Honda's, you know, the Africa twin is light for a, a thousand CC. So that's good. And the Africa yeah. twins, a dirt bike ish thing, right. Compared to the Pan America or whatever. But, um, in that category, those bikes are still a little heavy for like what KTM and what would be the KTM equivalent um, similar to the rally the, Honda the E Jesus EXC. How do you memorize this shit? Cause I, I know spent some time. That's why I have you here, bro. Uh, 350, the XC, uh, 350, yeah, EXCF, I think, but yeah, it should come up there, right there. Yep. Okay. You yeah, had, you did research this shit <laughs> on this dude. I, I want And what's so. the, that's a cool looking bike. Uh-huh. Um, very dirt, but, mm-hmm. um, I had looked at this before, uh, but yeah, $12,000. Yes. Jesus. Jeez. For the same motor. Well, no, that produces more horsepower. Uh, quite that bike bit. is faster quite a bit more yeah. horsepower so yeah. okay i think it's in the mid 40s it's a 350 but mid 40s so producing what our KLR is at, at that light little bike and i think that thing's Holy like shit. 260 260 pounds or something wow yeah so you know the ktm husky the husky's the uh, fe 350 i think or the te 350 i but um it should show what the weight is it yeah. was like a hundred and look at the specs it was like 108 kilograms which i worked out to be like 200 and they're, this website's terrible, dude. You yeah, have to yeah. Pull I pull up uh, a brochure and engine. Um, I'll look for specs here. Yeah, KTM is bad about. You have to. There go, we go. Oh, engine six speed. It won't tell you. It won't. Oh, hit show all and see. Maybe that'll. Yeah, work. show all. Displacement design steering. I yeah. remember this on their site. You have to actually type in like Google and try to find weight of. No, K- go to the. I'll show you where it is. It's it's totally ridiculous. If you go to the PDF. There's it says open brochure. Go up. Uh-huh. Up, 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 okay. up. Keep going, keep going. This Somewhere is, in there it'll say uh something. Download the oh, brochure. That's it. <laughs> I just do this. This is quicker than yeah. trying to search. Just go weight of EXC. Yeah, I already did it because I copied and pasted it. 100, uh, 230 pounds. pounds. Yep. So type in horsepower, the XCF three fifty. <laughs> See what you come up with. So two hundred and four thirty seven pounds. And then horsepower of thirty five horsepower. Oh, so the so the KLX has a, close to thirty, depending okay. on who you ask. Horsepower, it's three hundred pounds. That's two thirty, and it has thirty five horse. Right. So you can start to see a lot lighter, a ton. Wow. And maybe seven or eight more horse. Right. So you can see and that street EXCF. legal and right. street legal. Yeah. Um. Now I want that. I Jesus. did. The, you just couldn't do the twelve twelve 000. grand. I couldn't do it. I'm like, it's a dirt bike. I might ride. 
a thousand miles a year with your daughter. Yeah. And You're that's not, not an appropriate bike. Like you and I, if we agreed to dump everything else and buy those, right. I'm in, but for her, I, that's too much. Right. I, that KLX for putting around what she does. So, I mean, you're not riding with me yeah. where we can ride it more aggressively and, and fast and keep yeah. up with each other. You're just, right. yeah. Riding with her. I get it. That's a big price jump. Yes. Wow. For a 12. bike that I'm really realistically not going to ride. I'm going to now split the miles on my KLR and my Harley with the KLX. Right. So I, 12 grand, I was like, dude, even the WR450, which is like almost 10. The WR450. Four fifty. Four fifty. All right, I'm pulling it up. We're going to wind this down, but I'm having fun shopping for bikes here. It's fun. I'm I just did, window shopping. I yeah, got no, yeah. I, I only dream about getting, I have no use for it nor time to ride it. It's stupid and ridiculous that I'm even, if we, I if we agreed, to, if we agreed together, it would be great. I would I do it in a heartbeat. So me, you know, the when Yamaha. the kids are older. Yeah, WR4, it's 10, 10, 10 grand. grand. Yeah. Double the price of the KLX. So I'm like, well, that's a cool bike. It is a cool bike. Lightweight, a lot of street power. legal. Yep. Yep, street legal, but you're bumping up. Yeah, out of the 10 range now. Oops, go down. I want to do the 360 view. Ah, stop it. There. Cool bike. Yeah. It's got a little tail light there. I don't mm-hmm. have a license plate on it, but yeah. Where's the signals? Uh, I think they're built into that tail light. What about up front? None. You'd have to buy a kit. I'm sure that you'd have to do that on-road, off-road title thing from the manufacturer. Okay, because this is, so this isn't a complete comparable. You're going to have to right. do some shit to yep. this. Right. It's definitely more dirt. Yep. Um. Yeah, good-looking bikes, though. Mm-hmm. Good-looking awesome. Good-looking bikes. It's super durable. Now they're EFI, so you can buy a power commander for it. Oh, you... I already yeah, looked, that's I already right. looked for them, yeah. Wow. So you can... There's not a lot, but those have, you can download two maps and switch it on the handlebars. Dude, I think I have 30 tabs open. I know. This is ridiculous. But you see where I started to go. Like, I, well, okay. I I'm went gonna... there. Just, I just did the KLX and the CRF comparison. Yeah. And that was like, holy shit, dude. Yeah. Um, and the DRZ 400 isn't, it's heavier and it's about the same horsepower as the KLX 300. Why would it even go there? I mean, right. uh, there's no reason, but it's similarly priced and. It's Suzuki's offering, and Yamaha doesn't have anything close. The WR450 is not in the KLX category. They're different bikes. The, the what? The, the WR450 right. is not in the same category as the KLX300 or the DRZ400 or the CRF300. Right. Yeah, they're, I get you. It's, it's in the next, it's in the um, KTM500, Husky500, WR450 gotcha. category. So, gotcha. And then 10 grand and above. So, there you go. Let's finish it here. Unless you have any follow up, nah. Okay, forever we could well, take we could six just, hours and because we could start getting into other categories. Yeah. Yep. But this this here <laughs> is very much dirt oriented. Yes, barely street legal. Yes, basically it's so yeah. ride for ten minutes to get where you want. Mm-hmm. You are not going to ride this um, long distance on the street. How you haven't ridden it yet? You'll have to I'm, come back after you after yeah. we ride it a few days. Yeah. We're going to have to come back and do an episode about it. Yeah. I'm I afraid think, if I get on it, I'm going to want one. I have no reason for it. Yeah. I mean, the, my better right. sense will not get one, but I'm going to want one. I don't. Just because it's lighter than the KLR and it, it'll be fun. It's, it's We all, need to see if it if it really matters. Yeah, that, right. It'll be fun to go It will where we went in the LT Murray, go to Ellensburg yep. and see if it's really that much better. Right. I know for it'll be better we're for doing. Exactly. It'll be better for with my daughter for sure. I have no right. issue there, but for what we're doing, I don't know. This came up in our oh, yeah, sworn few club. Freaking SSRs. I've, wanted a, I've wanted a pit bike forever, dude. Just for here, for screwing around yeah. in the yard yeah. and riding to the mailbox. Just yeah. totally, dude, just for fun. Wouldn't a pit bike be great, dude? So those, I'm well, not going to. So this came up in, yeah, yeah, tell me, this came up in the our sworn few motorcycle club. We talk about all kinds of stuff. We've got different group me's, private groups going on. But yeah. uh, they posted this. This is the. Uh, New 2021 SSR SRN 110. Um, pit bike. These are little pit bikes, right? That's a pit bike style. That's not even a kid's. I mean, it's a kid's bike, but it's a pit bike style right. where if you know, if you don't know, little tiny pit wheels bikes are so fun. And then the then the, the suspension lifts up way high, so there's a lot of travel. Right. So fat asses adults like ride adults them. can ride you can them. wheelie them around. <laughs> yeah. You can throw them around and just be stupid, yeah. and they're just fun. Um, 
Apparently those. I want a pit bike. I might get one just for around here for the lab studio. Wouldn't it be yeah. fun just to screw? I, I would just go out in the yard, dude, and yeah. screw around and ride down the road to the mailbox and stuff. I ride my daughter's XR70 yeah, all over the neighborhood. I mean. There you go. See what I mean? It's so big. Like your knees at the yeah, the knees are up. It looks funny. <laughs> yeah. The the guys do videos on YouTube. It's fun when they take their little pit bikes out and I'll jump be on riding stuff. that one forty all over the place. Yeah, it's funny. That's but cool. those those things. So the guy I'm going to sell the XR two. He said he's got buddies with those. But you're going to sell your XR seventy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got a daughter the same age as mine who's just starting now. Anyway, he was talking about those because they were going to buy one of those for her. <laughs> he said they have friends that have them. The kids are riding down, you know, wherever, and, and the parts are falling off. Is that right? Like, they are really... this. So, yeah, these are the epitome of, like, cheap yes. overseas... Junk. Junk. Yep. SSR 125 for 1,064. <laughs> it's a 125cc pit bike. If you're going to get a pit bike, yeah. I would say go with, like, Kawasaki. Yeah. They make great pit bikes, right? They're not going to yeah. fall apart on you. Well, you can make anything into a pit bike. Right. Or you can buy these specific pit bikes but i don't think you just take the kawasaki klx 140 and make it into a pit bike can you yeah okay that's what everyone does there's that pit like that xr70 see like here the klx 110r yeah i typed in pit bike is that what you're talking about uh-huh. yeah and that's what they're coming out so that's really their version of uh a little pit bike what, what, what are you going to do to it to make it a pit bike there's kits you can do yeah, you I've can lift the, the suspensions and, okay and, and you can actually put a, a shock that'll support like my weight on there okay so you can there's all kinds of stuff i was gonna do that with the xr70 yeah but then i thought what am i i, I can't Dude, ride it around the city <laughs> how much is this this is so 2300 yeah and you just put some you basically put some better suspension mm-hmm. on it and then it's a pit bike mm-hmm. right god yep. that would be fun to have around look at that that's, that's a so perfect the klx 110r well and you're as tall as that kid so it would uh, be yeah, fun it actually might fit me just fine <laughs> It, it might fit me just fine, bro. <laughs> I don't know why. I just think it would be fun. They're the, funny. Here's the L. It's a little bit more expensive. Yeah. It's got seat it's taller height, different and, seat height. Yeah. Yeah. But God, maybe we'll do that. Especially when I retire, just to have something around. To goof off For on. the videos. And when you were real old, on. we can just ride out to get the mail or whatever. Exactly, dude. Exactly. Yeah, they're cute little bikes. I might keep that 140 for that reason when my daughter grows up now. Yeah. Let me look at that real quick before we take it out. Uh, the, uh, KLX 140, KLX 140. So you could make that and do a pit bike. You'd have to put suspension on it basically. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's got, I mean, it's made for kids. Yeah. But 30 inch seat height, little, the frame's a little beefier. Yeah. You know, it's got a five speed transmission and a clutch and. Yeah. Yeah. You could just put some suspension on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Coming in at. A little more expensive, thirty. Well, and ironically enough, it's a one hundred and forty, and you were looking at a YZ one hundred and twenty five. I know exactly, but it's how the bike's made and how the motor is. Right, and stuff. it's yeah, the little one hundred and twenty five will knock you right off the seat. They would, they have, they're fast, torquey as shit. Yeah, yeah. Yep, they're fast. So, is this real, real torquey? This one hundred and forty. I don't, don't know. know. I guess you'll find I, out when yeah. you find it if mm. she goes on her ass. I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna. We have to figure out how to work that work clutch, the clutch practice. That's a where lot. I'm gonna do that. Right, because I don't know if I want to do it at the slab. No, you. You kind of maybe want to do that on the grass. That's what I was going to do like, in our yard. Yeah. 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 In your yard or somebody's yard. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, when I was practicing wheelies on the KLR, I was doing it in my grass. Yeah, right. Yeah. So um, I got to get her set up with that. Okay. Enough about my dreams of <laughs> pit bikes, dude. All right. I hope Little, this was a fun conversation. We're done. Yeah. I think we're done. You got anything else you want to say to the audience before I, we go here? Hopefully it was informational if anybody's interested in this segment of the dual sport it's market. fun if you guys haven't gotten into it and you're not interested in breaking legs these these dual sports they're mild mannered they're fun to ride you can go places you can't get to on your street bike and it just opens up a new avenue for for being on two wheels i mean i just i love it i absolutely love it and it makes riding my harley even more fun yeah just the the difference between the two so if you're you not got, into it check it out you got a couple more minutes yeah just uh, like two three minutes sure we didn't talk about just, I'm not even going to dig in deep, but Kawasaki did bring back the KLR650. Oh, they, that's right. It's the 2021. So 18 yeah. was the last year. Yep. Um, they brought it back and uh, much awaited. What was going to happen? <laughs> real downer. We were really excited about in our episode that we did on the extinction. Yeah. That what if Kawasaki <sighs> what is retooling, do? reinventing oh. something? Oh that will compete 
in the market. I'm looking at it. And they and it looks like 1987 all over. It does. <laughs> it's a little different. But. So what Kawasaki did is they didn't go out of control. No. Um, I wish they would have. I wish they would have, even if they bumped the price up another grand or 1500 mm-hmm. or 2000 to make it better in a lot of different ways. But they didn't. To me, it looks like they built on the same frame, basically, mm-hmm. the same platform. Tell us what they actually did generally speaking, again, we're going to wrap this episode up, but if you're interested, I think, what did they actually do it? So they made it fuel injected. Finally, and, they got rid of the carburetor. They yeah. had to. They had to. Right. Emissions. Yeah. Everybody's got to go fuel injected. And that one's ABS, isn't it? Or you can get an ABS model. I think so. Um, Let's see. Let's they updated go. the suspension a little bit. Is there just again. one model, right? Or is there two models? I thought there was two. There's yeah. the adventure one. There's well, this, the baseline and then there's the adventure one. I want to go to kawasaki site i ended up on the stupid magazine website oh let me go to actual the kl or kawasaki there it is let's go to their website so yeah you've got the klr 650 abs and then uh there's a the yeah, adventure let's, one let's look at the models so motorcycles we will go to the klr there was two i thought those. there was there was Okay. I could have swore. So that's the Kawasaki. This is the KLR 650. Yeah, but they had an adventure model. View all and compare. They had an adventure model where it came with bags and stuff. I agree. They No, I guarantee they did. But I wonder if they scrapped it because that was stupid of them to do. Why? I don't know. That's weird. Maybe they maybe they revised it. Oh, oh there, there it are. is. There it is. So there's he, three of them. Here we go. So there's three of them. Yeah. The, tr- the KLR650 ABS, the KLR650 Traveler, and then the most expensive KLR650 Adventure. That is, I would not pay eight grand for that bike. So it, it's coming in at eight grand. Which one should we look at mostly? Should we just go for the Adventure? Sure, and Compare that to ours? Sure. Somewhat? Yeah, so why not? Since it's, since it's going to be the most newest version and all the bells and whistles that, that they have to offer for this. Um, so looking a lot like uh the like, the like, regular klr the camo version i have now um they put some new lights on it so they got some running lights it looks like led they went with led headlight some running lights um the venture comes decked out i think it's got uh those panniers engine guards it's, yeah. yeah it's got down here i think um what do you want to look at do you want to look at specs on it i want to look at something that they did well <laughs> right so what else uh let's look at specs so it's heavier which is stupid. it is heavier huh yeah hit technology then technology yeah anti-lock brake system okay good so, that's been around since 1982 right but go to power <laughs> it's camo though it's camo it's right <laughs> yeah, up your alley oh it'll i'll lose it in the woods so 652 cc four stroke look thumper that, dual overhead the bullshit cam. compression ratio that's bullshit is they could have they could have gone 11 i think my klx is 11 they could have gone to 11, squeaked out another 10 horse. No Solid. shit. I would pay grand for that bike. If that bike is 55, no 60 horse, to me, a 400, because it's like 20 pounds heavier, a 450 pound mid weight bike of that make at about 55 or 60 horse. Yeah. I'd buy that all day for okay. a grand. I'd love it. That's the bike we're talking about. But that's the bike we were hoping they'd come out. That's with. what I'm saying. Yeah. Sorry. They just, yeah, right. But they, um, didn't do that they kept it i don't think it got a single horsepower gain i think it's 39 horse no shit 20 pounds heavier or something it is 20 pounds heavier huh? that's freaking retarded okay we'll wrap it up here but i'm just going to go through a few more details uh 487, 487 ours are 432 pounds. of course this has everything but still um, the, look at the pan america 100 and what 50 horse and it's only 550 pounds right uh, right I know. I mean, and all the fancy stuff the Pan America has. Why did Cowie do that? Yeah. Ding dong. It's got, yeah. And it doesn't really, as far as I know, it doesn't have any like electronic traction control. I don't think it does. No, um, I'm not reading any, any. If we're wrong on this, you guys can tell us. Um, Unitrack single shock with adjustable rebound dampening and it adjustable spring had, load. It had that already. Right. So we've got that. Yeah. Um, 30 millimeter disc, two piston calibers. Yeah. I'm just looking through real quick through the specs here. There's just, I mean, fuel injected, right? That's, That's a big deal. Some lighting. Yeah. Um, it's a thumper. I will say 
It's still going to be a great bike Yeah. It, for what it is. It's going to be reliable. Yeah. It's a platform yeah. that they done. It's fuel injected. That's cool. Um, I'd go with their base model and buy some, you know, moto you? Moscow moto or Tusk. Right. You know, and because what they want for those panniers and those lights is ridiculous. Side cases, fog lamps. Yeah. It comes with, that makes it the full adventure. adventure. Um, God, it just, yeah. So let's go back to real quick and then we will wrap this up. I'm just generally curious. I could spend all freaking day talking about motorcycles. Me too. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get back to that page. There they are. So KLR 650 ABS. 7,000. 7,000. It doesn't come with the, um, I don't know. We're not going to get too deep if whether it comes with LEDs and we're really not riding these at night anyway. So I don't give two shits. Yeah. Um, if you were going to do, you know, serious ride and you're going to be riding at night and shit, you may think about that, but you can sure. always swap out to an LED. Yeah. All right. Um, the traveler, I don't really know. It's 73. What it has, it looks like it has a trunk, <laughs> $300 trunk, a $300 trunk. It's a big one too. That's a huge, it trunk. is a big trunk. So yeah, what you're saying is just go with the KLR 650 and then ABS base model, put your own crap on like it. we did, put yep. your own panniers. And, um, if you want some of that stuff, you could certainly put, you have to put engine guards on it, a better skid plate, you know, all this stuff yeah. is still, but really they just made it fuel injected for the most part. If you want to really talk, and that's they, really the biggest change. They did. And they really, Oh, the fuel injection, really fuel injection has been out since Correct. the eighties. Yeah. Right. It's not that big of a deal. Right. It, so it starts easier. Yeah. My cow is hard to start sometimes. Okay. It, so it starts easy. I, well, who cares? Yeah. I mean, they had a, hopefully real, the uh, suspension's better. So it is. Maybe the you suspension is a so little you don't heavier. have to upgrade right away. Right. They finally figured that out. So some very incremental changes is mm-hmm. what I'll call them. It's not really a huge redesign. Some incremental changes that makes the bike a little bit better off the showroom. And floor. the gas, they redesigned the gas tank. So you don't have that pocket of, you know that about those? And I forget. Tell you, me. So these are bikes. It's stupid. You they have a reserve like typical carbureted right. bikes, but the way the gas tank straw draws, it creates on the right side, the left one side, it creates this little pocket mm. of like a third of a gallon. So what the trick with those is if you're stuck like near, you can actually tip it over. To which side? I can't remember. Oh, you gotta tell me this. I'm gonna have to remember. I, yeah. I read some articles on you tip it over to one side or the other. I think they tip it left. And it and, drains and you'll all get that them. that little pocket will eventually work its way over. No. And then shit. you can and so they did away with that. Okay. Why did they do that in the first place? I have no just idea. Just poor design. Poor, terrible design. Okay. It was just a split tank in 1987 and they didn't change it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So, okay. So I get a full, guess what? Having a full tank of gas and using the full tank. Right. That's not new. No. I came out in 1875. And I think <laughs> at the end of the day, we're not dogging it. We have KLR 650s. Like For that bike. price still. Yeah. And that reliable bike. It's great. And fuel injected. The KLR is still a staple of the industry for that segment. This is not the KLX 300. Go get a KLX 300 like Oscar did if you want to do more dirt. But for 50 50 kind of street or maybe 70 30, you know, dirt street, Mm -hmm. 60 40, whatever, you know, the KLR is still something I would look at. I think we're just disappointed. Yeah. Because we were expecting, like, Oh, this is Kawasaki's chance yes. to take over this niche of yes. the market. Like yep. with this weight ratio that they were going to take it and they didn't. They did They kind of stalled out. Yeah. Still a great bike if you're interested True. in it. It would not do you wrong for the type of riding that me and Oscar do. I still would look at it as a staple within this for that price point. Um, otherwise, you're jumping up to the 12s with a KTM. Yes. More yes. power, of course, lighter, but price range you're going to jump up four grand five grand yep and this is a viable distance bike it is and that's why we sound like we hate it (laughs) i think just because we were expecting more than a few incremental changes yep Yep. we're not saying it it's pretty much the same klr with a few incremental changes but still something to look at we're still going to ride our klrs i mean we love them yep um i just was hoping for something that made me a little bit more excited just kind of got the blood flowing yes uh, more horses if you're going to make horses, you're right. That would have been, they could have left everything else the same, yep. just bring more power into yeah. it. Some more horses. You wouldn't have had to do a whole bunch more fuel nope. injected, some more horses. 
I think I would have been excited then, I, a if, lot more excited. If I'm not getting a, rid of my KLR for this. No, no, no. If this a was a 60 horsepower bike, I would have had one the next day. Right. We would have traded in. I would have. In a heartbeat. And when it came out, I, I was excited. I was like, okay, it's time to get a new KLR. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah. Or is it? I was like, not time to get a new KLR. Because I've got the panniers on mine. Yeah. I put an electronic dash in it. Yeah. I put engine guards and a better skid plate. I did front suspension. You're still springs. cheaper I than 6,600 yeah, bucks. Mine's set up the way I want it. Yeah, and no, yeah, I it's agree. carbureted. I do wish it was fuel injected. My KLR carburetor is a little finicky. Is it really? Now and then it pisses me off. Huh. It gets like locked and it, it's done it a few times and then, then it wants to die. Huh? Uh, and, huh. But then it works itself out and it goes. Um, so I don't know. It's like a woman. Yeah, totally, dude. Totally. <laughs> On that bombshell. <laughs> Way to end it. Mm-hmm. KLR's like a woman. You're lucky if over the course of your marriage you get some incremental upgrades. <laughs> Maybe a boob job. Maybe. <laughs> That's horrible. We need to let all that go right now. Oh, God, dude. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Had a good, great two episodes. Awesome. Totally awesome. Back Love to back. It. We talked about the Pan America on our last episode. And a whole bunch of stuff in between. Um, and then this one was all about adventure here in 2021. But like we said, aside from being able to get the bikes, yeah, maybe when COVID lightens up, things are lightening up. It's not going to be so much supply and dem- there's not going to be, yeah. there's going to be more supply than demand. So hopefully there'll be more product available, but there's been as a buyer, if we could get everything on the shelves. There's never been more options. Oh, man, it's great. To the point where you'll yeah. do Oscar and you'll <laughs> stress yourself out. Me Every too. morning. Uh, the rabbit hole, dude. <laughs> yeah, totally. But that was, dude, I'm so glad I brought you on this episode. It's fun. Because off the top of your head, you knew a lot of these models. Um, good luck. On, I'm excited. You picked it up yeah. Thursday. I'm excited for your daughter. Um, I can't wait till you get your hands-on experience. Mm. We will bring Oscar back. Hopefully, at some point, I'll get to spend just a little bit of time on it. Yeah. And uh, we'll be able to come back and sit down, and we'll just do an episode on the KLX 300 and our yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Um, Compare we'll, it to the 650. Exactly. Compare it a lot to the 650 and for the type of riding we do. Um, yeah, it should be fun. And we'll just be doing some videos, of yeah, course. Of course. I'll do some day vlogs um, and put it out on the channel of, of Oscar on the new KLX 300, and maybe we'll talk about a little bit in those vlogs and what he's liking and what he's not liking. Of course all be coming out on the youtube channel we've had a blast with you guys thanks for being here We're just doing the command cue to quit all 30 tabs. I'm not doing those at one at a time, bro. You see that? Yeah. I'm just like not doing it. So command many bikes. Cue. So many bikes. Oh, I do need to get back and quit our live stream. No, that was dumb. <laughs> It'll just be a live stream of an uh, empty studio no for doubt. hours and hours. We're out.